Hello and welcome to Alex Builds. If you're a new viewer, you'll be interested to know we're two years and 23 episodes in. If you're an existing viewer, you're probably sick of this recap, but here's the highlights. We've got massive excavations, huge slopes, tree stumps everywhere, footing's gone wrong, a massive concrete cock-up, a less of a concrete cock-up, loads of stonework, the epic arch episode, and that pointy bit up the top. Now, since then, I've been teaching myself the ancient art of oak framing. But look, we're finally here. The time has arrived where wood is going to meet stone because we're ready to actually start on the proper construction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 25. And it's a biggie because we're building the frame. Now, quick recap. This is the whole thing that we're going to be building and um, showing you the frame underneath. And if you've been watching the series so far, you'll have seen that we did all of this stonework here. And you've also seen that we have built this. It's called a raised collar truss. The objective today is to get the raised collar truss up on top of the stonework and then build the frame around it. Let's go. Now, I wasn't going to film any of this, but I'm down on the site. And it's a very, very wet day, so I'm not going to do the woodwork. But I'm going to create these concrete pads. Basically, where the leg is going to sit on top, here on the top, and on here, and on the corner, and here, I don't want to put the wood straight onto the stone, for the obvious reason that the stone is not very even, so one stone will take all the load, and that will result in things like this. The stone's coming out. So what we do is, is we pour some concrete on top of that with a bit of rebar in it. The thing is though, you've got to stop the concrete pouring off the edge. So how do we do that? Well, this was more challenging than I thought. So I've got this far with it. I've done one side. So a bit of wood going up here, holding in a bit of wood that I have cut approximately to size, but you can see the daylight coming through that crack. And on this side, wait for the contrast. And on this side here, but obviously there's gaps on it. I've not done the other side. So I'm filming this through the gap in the ladder. <laughs> it may not work. So that's the inside. So I've basically got to seal this off and pour concrete in it. This is not a lot of fun. I'm doing this in the rain now. I forgot to trim the rebar. This is terrible, but look, it'll go in and stick out the top. It doesn't matter. It's just in the middle to hold it together. Okay, there it is. Right. I, <laughs> do you know what? Me and concrete are not the best of friends. Uh, followers of the series will realise. I'm not going to call that a fiasco. Not quite as intended. Anyway, I'm going to let that set. Come back either tomorrow or well, actually it's Sunday. Come back next week. And if that's worked out okay, I can do the same on the other side. Right, it's stupid hat and worse jacket because it's raining quite hard. So I'm returning to where I did this little concrete plinth, that be the word. So we're getting ready for the big week. The telehandler's coming on Wednesday. Now, we had quite a bit of snow over the weekend up here uh, and everything was frozen solid, so I couldn't do the job I needed to do, which is basically get this concrete in place. Otherwise, Think about it the concrete will be wet i need it to be set before i do it so i've had to come out on a monday afternoon in the rain the last thing i wanted just to crack on anyway let's have a look at this bit here yeah it looks pretty good i thought that might look really ugly actually you know and out of place but actually i don't think it does at all but as you've noticed i've left like a one inch gap around the sides and what I could do is I could face that off uh, with a bit of the actual stone if need be. But as I say, it hardly, hardly stands out. Right, I'm going to go for an extra big one here. It doesn't really matter how wonky this thing is. Just as long as, you know, it supports the concrete when it goes in. I, today, I've just got to tell you, let's just look around. Oh, it's, I, it's just bleak is the word. If you're uh, one of those subscribers in Australia and it's warm and it's nice you bastards but I'll get my revenge in spring our spring there you go a bit of personalized rebar there I've got a couple of those wall ties kicking around I might just chuck them in for good measure I'll tell you this camera is making it look a lot brighter than it is it's really quite dark now so that one's done on the corner that one tucked in there and the one up the top there so that's enough for today. Shout out time, starting with Mr. Wadolfian. He is in Hamilton, Ontario. I had to look that one up, right next to uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, he's talking about a scarf joint, and I will be doing a scarf in a couple of episodes' time. Can't say I'm looking forward to it. 
Right, so it's Wednesday the 6th of December. This is a big, big day in the Alex Builds history. Best of all, we got a nice day. But the tally handler's turning up at midday. I've got it for, well, it's a three day hire, but I've got it for five days. And basically we're gonna be putting the race collar truss up and the rest of the barn section up. Well, that's the plan anyway. Oh, I'd like it to go well. I really would, but we have been here before. You know, I'm actually genuinely nervous, really nervous actually, I feel a bit sick. I'm thinking about all the things that can go wrong. I mean, what we're gonna do first of all is this here, the raised collar truss, I've got to get up there. So that is the initial goal. Things that can go wrong today are numerous. Number one, knocking that over. I mean, just ignore the, the risk of it falling on me, just the idea that I might knock it over. I took a considerable amount of time to put together. The other rather obvious thing I want to avoid is injury or death of myself or anyone else or anything living. Joking aside, you know, this is scary, scary stuff. In terms of the weights and what we're doing, it does unnerve me, I won't lie to you. I don't want that to break. I mean, again, I can probably put it together, the odd dowel snapping, but again, it will be annoying. And then finally, and I haven't got it yet, it's turning up, I do not want to break the tully handler. So there you go, that's just a selection. And you might remember last time I had a delivery of the wood, the lorry got stuck. You know, just stuff tends to go wrong at a minute. So actually, this is the first thing that could have gone wrong. It seems okay. This has this concrete go off. Obviously it normally would, but I don't think you can see it's freezing. Uh, everything's frozen. When I put it in, uh, it was definitely above freezing because it was raining, but it does seem to be okay. Okay, it's fine. With hindsight, really a bit narrow. I'm not sure why it didn't come a bit further, but look, it's sitting on these coins, which is what I want. I think it'll be fine. God, I've only been out for about 10 minutes just moving stuff. My hands are absolutely frozen, so I'll get the old gloves on. Right, just wait for the telehandler to turn up now. Half 11, so hopefully next half an hour. And then we can maybe make a start. This really is a tricky one to work out. So the tally handle I've got coming is actually a bit smaller than the JCB one, I forget the make now, but it will fit through the arch. So I could, in theory, and it might be a better idea, move all the scaffold and come in that way and lift it up and then basically reverse back and plonk it in place. I still think that is gonna be the safer way to do it and I think it would be my preferred way but I would also rather have the scaffolding in place when I have to do all the sort of tying it in. So I'm reluctant to uh, remove the scaffold quite yet. The other option is that I pick it up from the top, suspend it on those ratchet straps, get it up level and approach from here. You know, essentially come from the side and drop it down in place. Now, I think that's gonna be very difficult. I think the access is gonna be hard. And I also think we might be at the limits of what this thing can handle in terms of the tally handler because I'll be I'll have the extension all the way out. Right well, here we go. This time after the lorry wood fiasco, there's no way I'm getting in down. So we're just gonna load here, but it looks good. Right. Daft hat is back messing around today, don't need it right now. So I'm just gonna have a bit of a play around with this. You can't see it from there. The one big difference compared to the Avant is that it's got an accelerator and a brake. The Avant's got a forward and reverse. It's all hydrostatic. So uh, I need to get my head around that first of all. Let's just see if I can get it lifted and tilting. Next thing I'm gonna try is the steering modes. It has got these different modes. So at the minute it's on a four wheel steer, okay? Which means they both go, but you can actually get it to do, oh God, I demonstrate this, but it's like a sort of both of them go, so you go diagonal. Now it could be incredibly useful for the tight space. So I'm gonna have a play around with that now.
Right, I'm going to try an initial lift to see if I can get it up in the air. I'm not really confident about how I'm doing this, so let's just start with that. This is as stressful as I thought it might be, but it's okay. So we've got it on its end for the first time ever. Keep my eye on it, I'm not on the line of where it falls. If it falls over, it's going to make a big bang. What I want to do is I want to get it out and lift it out, but I'm not comfortable lifting it on the straps. I'm already getting a bit of a tilt warning on the, uh, on the telehander, so I'm at the capacity here. So that tells me I'm going to have to get the forks sort of underneath it or in there, one or the other. <laughs> oh god, I did not enjoy that. Didn't enjoy that at all. It's actually alright. Let me just check this is filming. God almighty. Right, okay, I think I've got a plan of action. Always me and my timings. I think I thought I was going to have this up this afternoon. I'm insane. I've said this so many times. So it's 20 past three, which means we've got about 50 minutes of light. As you can see, I have been able to move it, had it on its end. Um, quite a few warnings going on the tilt, um, but that was far out. When I actually brought it close in, and I had it on the forks and lifting it from underneath, it was fine. So truth be told, I am about 90% confident that I can lift it up to height. Actually, truth be told, I haven't entirely tested that theory. Um, I will before I get it in. So I think the best thing to do with the remaining time uh, is to get the old test frame back in with those concrete pads, just recheck my heights, because uh, I still need to trim the legs on that uh, at the bottom. Uh, and potentially actually trim the, uh, the the notch for the king post, which I think I thought I was going to do when it was up there. I'm now thinking that's probably insane. So I'll just do that now and then we'll call it a day. <laughs> Look at that. That is pretty high. That's way higher than I need to get to. I'm sure of it. In fact, I'm going to test it with a ladder. Oh, it's been a while since I've had this up. bought some new kit I had a laser before but it was like a Stanley cube I bought it like oh god over a decade ago and it was rubbish you can only use it in dusky conditions anyway this is the Sigmund CM701 uh, very powerful very good and very green I like a green laser so I'm going to give that a go now at the top of the ladder I've already got it in my eyes about five times um, but I didn't read the instructions and I had it rotated 90 degrees, so I can't really blame the manufacturers for that one. But anyway, good bit of kit. Might put a link in the description, but I'll probably forget. That is very, very good.
Right, it's day two. If yesterday was cold and frozen, I would say today is wet and wild. So we've got the test frame up. Right, if you look at where the bottom of this comes in on the concrete pad, you can see that it's sort of within that by about an inch. And if you were to look at the other side, it actually overhangs by about an inch. It just tells me we're a bit off center. The slight issue is when I come to cut the main one, the main piece of wood, the wood is actually thicker, but it's gonna be thicker on the inside. So that means that we're gonna have more of an like overhang type problem. So what I'll have to do, and I might have to do a diagram here, is I think I'm gonna to have to cut the feet a bit lower on this to make it a bit wider. But that then means that where I cut into the king post at the top needs to come down a bit. And then that means that the diagonals are gonna be set a little bit higher, which I'll have to offset for later on, probably by notching the purlins in, the side purlins a little bit, just to make them sit a bit lower. So there you go, there's the line I'm gonna cut the feet onto. And I've made sure it all lines up by putting a bit of two by four all the way across. So it makes sure we are gonna be flat. Right, just attempting a full rotation so I can cut the other side. This is easier than it sounds, I tell you. Well, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but that lawn is getting really chewed up now. This is becoming my new risk, is that I get the loader stuck uh, down the lawn. That really will be an issue. So I'm gonna to have to be careful. As soon as I can get out of this lawn area, the better. So I've gone through with the circular saw, but there's a surprising amount of material left in there, which I'll get with a reciprocating saw. Good purchase that. Wind is really getting up now. Don't know if you can hear it. You're probably thinking, hey, this is going pretty smoothly, and uh, it was, but you know what? There had to be a bit of a fiasco stroke crisis, and this is the start of it. Look how the tires are digging in, and look how they're starting to slide. So this fear of getting bogged down is about to become quite real. So this little brainwave you're gonna see was my idea to pick it up from the side. So rather than dangle it uh, from those straps, which makes the center of gravity quite high, I thought just get a couple of bits of two by four in there and then I can get underneath with the forks from the side. Simple. As well as this getting really boggy and slippy, I think I might have slightly overestimated the strength of two by four. Well, I'm pleased that shambles was caught on camera. This is not good. I definitely change your approach, I'll tell you that. I'm going for a cup of tea. Calm my nerves. <gasps> Another fiasco. Nice to hear from Mohammed in Suriname. Is that how you say it? In South America? We're finally in South America. And I'm not gonna lie, I definitely had to look that one up. He suggests that to stop the mortars of ripping up is that I should take it off and rotate it 180 degrees. That is a great tip. But unfortunately, I'm just too lazy to do that. Right, I'm not crystal clear what I'm gonna do now. 
The key is you can't drive the telehandler on the soft ground when you're holding the thing. That's not quite as disastrous as it sounds because of course you can be stationary and move it forwards and whatever. Right, <laughs> this is mildly dispiriting but also quite comical. It's occurred to me that I'm just trying to get this back up on the slab. So in 24 hours I've achieved getting it off the slab where it was all along, putting it down there <laughs> and then bringing it back again. Oh god, anyway that wasn't the plan. But actually I've realised I am missing a very obvious opportunity. So you might remember I said that I was thinking of driving the uh, tally handler through the arch and then sort of reversing the truss up above. That's what I'm going to do. Well, actually, this has got a very good turning circle, this thing. So why don't I just drive it through the arch and then drive it round towards where the camera is now. And then I can get to the end of this, pick that up from there, which I can just do by putting some straps around it. I'll, I'll make that happen. Get it in position and then just basically reverse back into position. I'm often asked what's the secret of being a YouTuber and I would say it's looking after your equipment, in particular your lenses. Ouch. It's another lens broken, another 770 pounds second hand. Right, I actually hit the arch. I really did hit the arch. So it shows it's strong, but I can't believe I let that happen. We've got an inch over here. I'm gonna try and pull this back, but I was just sort of out of room. Can't tell if it's sitting on the forks or not. Oh, I've got a bit of rain the lens. Don't know. But anyway, let me just have a quick pause, see what I can do next. Well, I'm basically working like in the dark and I've just finished tying all this stuff in. Now, I know it looks wonky, I don't care. I've got it up, it's sitting a teeny bit off where I want it, but obviously the key thing is I don't want it going anywhere. The last thing I've got to do now is just get up that ladder at the back and get the uh, ratchet strap off. It's just there, it's not supporting anything. Still, not particularly excited about the idea of climbing up there. I think you can see it's raining, and this is why I haven't filmed this section. 
cannot get the camera going in this rain. It's relentless. Anyway, we'll do a review in a minute. Hard to film, but I don't know if you can see how close we are uh, to the arch with that little hook. And yes, we did strike the arch. I can't believe I did that, but I got away with it. It's the morning after the night before. <laughs> there it is. It's still standing. It survived the night. So that's good. So as we walk in through here, you get this first view. Basically why I did the raised collar truss. Would have been so much easier just to put a beam straight across from where the foot hits the wall. But you would have had a big beam across the front of the arch. This way I haven't. Here it is. <laughs> that is quite something actually, honestly. I'm going to blow my own trumpet here as we say in England because I think that is actually honestly quite a significant achievement. So it, this is Friday the 8th of December and it's 9am and I am hoping that by this evening I'm going to have episode 25 out covering this. So we're right up to date. Well, what do you know? It is the evening of Friday the 8th of December, as I record these words, and I have indeed got episode 25. You've just watched it, if you've got this far. Now, the best bit is, is I'm going to have another video out in a week's time, so that'll be Friday the 15th, which frankly is like warp speed compared to how I normally get them out, which is often about four months apart. So if you have enjoyed it, please give the video a like and perhaps subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all being well next Friday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.